Coach, what initial thoughts on Tennessee for tomorrow night? You know what? Obviously, they've had a heck of a season. Um, leading the country in wins, balance top to bottom. Uh, their offense, obviously, the numbers speak for themselves. Um, again, though, I feel like the ACC prepares you for these games, and we did play LSU in three game series as well. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited for our guys to play Tennessee. I think we have a really, really good club. Two, two really good clubs going to be going at it tomorrow night. What do you, how do you think the matchup is with Shea? They, they hit a lot of fly balls. You know, Shea, I think, matches up good with anybody. Uh, he's competitive. Obviously, he can throw his fast, balls, his fast ball to both sides of the plate. The change up makes the fastball play up, and Coach Gaines and Coach Howell have done a really good job with him with the slider. Like, it's more consistent. He's not making as many mistakes with it, and he can show it to lefties and righties if he needs it. So he has those three pitches, and, um, you know, he's been really good for us all year. And you just look up with Shea, you know, there's some trouble a lot of times. But you look up, he's going six innings, hopefully, in the game. We're ahead three to two. Years. That's kind of the way it's been. How has Alberto been lately? I'm sure it was tough for him to be pinch hit for late in the game. He's an unbelievable kid. Um, you never have to worry about Alberto Sina's attitude. Uh, and that's just the way it works. When you have depth like we have, uh, you know, if somebody is struggling, it, it can help your team having somebody that's talented enough to come in like Jackson Vandenbreek or Johnny Castagnazzi and do something big for us. And both those guys have done something really big for us. You know, Johnny with the double against LSU and then Bandy with the double last night. Uh, so that's – that's our, our guys look at that like that's a good thing. Did Bandy earn himself have you another chance? No, no. Have you – have you thought it out? Sorry, Arnold. Sorry, Arnold's got next. It's all right. Just on the subject of Alberta, just to follow up. Have you thought about making a change there? At all? Oh yeah, I'll, yeah, definitely. Um, we want to pitch hit for him. You know, if, if some, sometimes you're just not going to pitch hit, right? Um, but our depth allows us to do that. Uh, so I'm going to look at Drew Beam, really, really good, who I think matches up the best in that seven hole in the DA spot. And uh, I'm going to write him. Mean, I've done it ever since I. Became a head coach. I always promised myself, and I promise these guys when I recruit them. When the game, when I'm sitting in my office, and I make out the lineup. Everything, you know. Obviously, if you're not meeting our standards, you're not going to be in the mix anyway. But my job is to put the nine guys out there at that day that we feel like give us the best chance to win. That's like, that my question. If, if Vandy would get another chance, I guess it would be him or Johnny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to dive into Tennessee a little bit more um, when I get back to my hotel room. And, I'll make that decision pretty early tonight and have the lineup done, I'm pretty sure. Tennessee, one of the most explosive offenses you guys yeah. have probably faced up yeah. until now. Are you making any tweaks to that game plan, telling the guys anything in specific defensively? Nope. No, our outfield play is tremendous. Um, we've always believed in our outfield play. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna be like, hey, just because they hit a lot of home runs, we're not playing deeper. The park is the park. Our guys can run. Casey might play a little bit deeper. Uh, but you have to be careful from the pitching standpoint. When you have a team like that and you look at it on paper, if you start trying to nibble, you're going to be in hitters' counts all day. you got to go right at them. And there might be a guy like a Christian Moore that you say, hey, he's so hot he's not going to beat us. But otherwise, you got to go after him. And, you know, the, the pitcher's got the ball, so he has the advantage. Is there everyone available out of the bullpen tomorrow? Everyone. Obviously, we're not going to have Becara in the bullpen. But, yes, everybody is available. Did Pence and Poston throw it all today, or were you saving them up for tomorrow? They feel great. Um, you know, 20-something for Pence. I don't know how many for Poston. But if you look at the workload throughout the year, I feel like as a staff, we've done a good job of managing those guys. Um, and we had enough depth where nobody really was overworked going into the postseason. So knowing that, then you can allow a guy to go longer. We also had the guys build up to around that 50, 60 range um, in the preseason. So, you know. You add Halt back into that mix, he'll be available in the bullpen tomorrow. So we can match up a little bit if we need to as the game goes along. You know, if Shea gets us into the fifth, we're going to feel really good about that. How did, when you were talking to Shea Sprague in the transfer portal, obviously you know the, the CAA pitcher of the year a couple times. Yeah. Like, how did what you were sort of envisioning if he did come to you guys match up with what has he become? What did you think you were getting? And, and before you got yeah. him and now, you know, that you've had him for a whole season. Well, his head coach, um, who I've known forever, and uh, the recruiting coordinator there and the pitching coach all had, they raved about him, even though as hard as it was to lose him. You know, I put myself in their shoes. Like, I might, I, I don't know what I would have wanted to say. Some of us know Mike Kennedy well, too. Yeah, <laughs> and they really were like, hey, this kid, look, throw out the radar gun, throw out all that stuff. Coach Gaines would have watched him pitch in the Cape. 
Um, I loved him on the phone, had him on a visit, loved his dad. His mom didn't make it, but I could tell it was a great family. There's something about him you could just tell, like, when you watch him too on video, he's just got the competitive, like, you know, that's the biggest thing. His stuff was good, not great, but he also pitched well. I mean, he threw 90 innings, you know, last year, so we feel like worst-case scenario, you know, he's going to give us 50. And But what he's done has really – stabilized our entire pitching staff when he moved in there. How have you seen him evolve across this season? I mean, honestly, I feel like his biggest outing was uh, at the beginning of the season. It was the second weekend we're playing Miami. We lost the first two. He comes out and strikes the first eight out of nine. Really set the tone on that game. We just lost. You know, we got run ruled, and then we got walked off. So you're like, okay, we need to win this game badly. And if he doesn't start like that, who knows? Maybe we get swept. So since then, I feel like he's taken a step, a step, a step. And also having Haskin here, who caught him at Elon. Yeah. You know, Haskin's like one of our coaches, basically. You know, he's always with them in the bullpen, constantly challenging them. And I do feel like his velocity's gotten better. He's gotten stronger. Um, that's, that's a credit to our, our strength coach and our strength overall program. So I feel like he's, you know, he's grown also and gotten a lot better. And his velo's gotten better. Yeah, is there Bob? wasn't in the rotation to begin the season. Was yeah. the plan to always kind of work him into that role by this time? Not really, honestly. Um, he had a terrible preseason. He got lit up on it. I mean, he just got hit hard. And his velo was down, but he was behind. Um, and then his last couple outings were better. We put him in early in the game out of the bullpen. He threw strikes. He threw pretty decent. And then we just said, you know, that's, that's, that's why we brought him here. You know, out of all of our guys, he's got that change up. Let's throw him out there because sometimes what you see in the preseason is not what the same thing you're going to see in the regular season. Some guys cross that white line. And one thing about Shea is he worked in the weight room. He worked meticulously with everything he did. So we thought, okay, let's see what he does with another uniform. And obviously, he was really good. How often do you see that switch between um, maybe not performing well in preseason, but then yeah. coming in and doing you see it? You see it often, but you don't see somebody be able to do it in the season if they don't work. That's one thing I figured out. Like people say, "Oh, well, he's a gamer." Well, he's not a gamer unless he's right. put in the work. You know, the kids that you know, kids that don't get after it and, and can't get in that weight room and push themselves and push themselves with their conditioning and take care of themselves off the field, they, they're they're not going to be in that gamer territory. But some guys are just for some reason that do work. It takes that extra adrenaline for them to be as good as they're capable of being. Scott, That's when one. you watch when you watch Tennessee play. You know, they call them the bad boys of college baseball. Uh, <laughs> what do you – what – as someone who knows the game yeah. like you do, what do you think when you see them play with all those different weapons and yeah. the talent? You know what I'm saying? Like, is that yeah. what jumps out to you when you're watching them? Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody in, in, this, days and age, in this day and age has something to say, obviously. Um, I've always respected Tony. I think he's done a heck of a job. They wouldn't be saying anything about Tennessee if they weren't winning. And he's gone there and he's won. Um, and, you know, I enjoy playing a team. If somebody calls them the bad boys, I want I want our guys to strap it on and see what we can do against the bad boys, if that's the case. Uh, but, yeah, they're talented. Uh, they do a really good job of recruiting. We feel like we do the same. Uh, we, we feel like our program matches up against anybody. So I'm, I'm more our guys, like, they'll be ready, I can tell you that. Thank y'all. Thanks, Thank y'all. How'd you get a horse? I don't know. I lost by 40. Yeah, yeah I didn't. Yeah, I they saw it at the very end. In Boston, so I don't blame them. The bar I was at I'm had happy. that on at the same time as the baseball game, so I was like, yeah, yeah they're just screen. waiting to do it in Boston. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Shay, can you talk about your evolution? He, Scott was just talking about preseason, didn't go well for you. Right. And then you're where you are now. How did that happen? I, th- I think it was. I think it was good for me to get hit around the preseason. And then, obviously, as the year went on, it just kept getting better and better and better. And then, um, I think the biggest thing is just staying confident, um, no matter what happens, and not riding the roller coaster like me and Jason like to say to one another. But uh, yeah, I think the preseason definitely helped. Definitely highlighted some of the flaws that I need to work on in my game. But I think it was all for the better. Shay, when you, you look at when you look at Tennessee, I mean they've got pro prospects everywhere up and down their lineup. What has jumped out of you from the scouting report on them, or just what you've seen of them this season? Yeah, they're pretty good. They can swing it. Um, we were at the game last night. Um, Christian Moore's a good player. Um, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean they got dudes all up and down the lineup. So 
it's definitely exciting to go test yourself, see what you can do against these guys, and um, if I'm making pitches, we'll be, we'll be just all right. How so much? were you, sorry Grace, were you just along those lines being at the game, like are you trying to take mental notes when you were watching the game last night, or were you just trying to enjoy a game? You know what I'm no, saying? Like, yeah, were you I like was, doing homework? I know, I was a fan. Okay. Me and Parks were, we were like little boys walking around there. Parks was loving it, he was eating it up. But um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really paying too much attention to you. how they were pitching those guys, but it was fun to watch and it was a good game. Sure. How much do you utilize a scout when you go up against an opponent? Um, I leave that really for Coach Gaines just because. When he's calling pitches, he's got an entire binder in front of him, and I'm just uh, trying to execute the pitch. I mean, it's a little different, I guess, when you're playing a three-game series because you get to watch the swings, but I've never seen Tennessee play in person, so I'm just going out there trying to execute which coach games thinks fits best. How has it been working with Luke this season? I mean, this is both of your guys' first seasons in Chapel Hill, mm -hmm. and he's a true freshman, but he's clearly a very advanced true freshman at the catcher right. spot. What, how has he helped you in your evolution, and how do you think you've helped him? Yeah, he's a stud. Um, I mean, it's so rare for a kid to get, one, to get on campus and be that good, and two, just handle it the way he's handled it. Um, he's been so hands-on, and I think he's got a sense of confidence that it's really hard to instill in someone. I think it's got to come from within. And even the way, I know in the fall we mess with him, the way he like jumps in the box and does a little <laughs> Soto shuffle, but I think that's... <laughs> I, I like how he does that too, because it means he got a little bit of presence in the box too. But um, I think from helping him, I don't think he's needed much help. I think going into the season, he probably helped me out a little bit. Um, but yeah, he's really good at just instilling confidence in you. And Shay, if we had hard every pitch. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Did I cut you off? No, you're good. Uh, if we had looking through this, it gets a little weird. Yeah. Uh, if we had the ability to time travel, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and we went back to when you got in the portal. Yeah, and we said, "Look, you're gonna be, you know, playing a winners bracket game, the College World Series, and pitching against Tennessee uh -huh. uh, in June. Mm -hmm. Like, what would Shea Sprague of whatever, how many months ago that was? What would you have said to that?" I said, "Hell yeah!" That would, <laughs> I mean, that's why I went to Portland. We're here now. It's a hell of an opportunity, and I'm I'm excited to get out there tomorrow. Did your change up, the way you use your change up, the real key to your success this season? T yeah. Tell tell me how that's evolved over the season. Um, I think, well, in, in the January, I think the biggest thing was me not being able to throw it just because I was overthinking it and slowing down my arm. Like, I know I've hit, I hit Carter French in the back four times in January. <laughs> and I don't know why I was Carter French every time. You're <laughs> throwing at him, clearly. Yeah, I mean, throwing at him at 74 mile per hour <laughs> change up. But, um, the biggest thing is just having confidence in that pitch. And obviously, you have confidence in that pitch, it helps me build confidence with a fastball and slider. What percentage of change are you throwing these days? I have no idea. I know last year at Elon it was 58%. So I, I knew it was high. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know what it, the exact numbers are right now. What has been your relationship with Coach Gaines and kind of helping Thank you know, get to this moment, You know, especially kind of the conversations you had after that preseason? Yeah, I mean, we definitely had some, some good conversations talking about what needs to get better and what I've been doing well. But, I mean, he's the man. He's an incredible coach. He instills real confidence in you every day. And he knows when things are going right that you got to keep your foot on the gas and keep getting better every day because the moment that you get complacent is when you get caught. So, I mean, he's incredible. He's probably one of the best coaches I've ever had on both like on field presence, in game decision making, and then development and the personal relationship. How much do you love and how important is it for you to have Parker here with you? I love it. He's the man. Parker was the captain last year at Elon, so. Obviously not the captain this year, but he definitely has a, a huge leadership role. And Park, when I was a freshman at Elon, was almost like Luke. He was a junior, but he was just incredible and some confidence in you. And I think he saw like a quiet confidence in me, so we kind of came together a little bit better than most would. But I mean, it means the world to go through this with him. And He's such an incredible guy and leader and mentor, so it's awesome. It was enjoyable, Shay, hearing you. Oh, did you have a follow-up, Grace? Well, Go I, for yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry. When, <laughs> when Parker catches your bullpen, does he notice things that a lot yeah. of other people just wouldn't notice and points them out to you? Yeah, like he knows like arm speed, my sights, everything. I mean, we got it down to a science now, and I like I always say like it's him and Coach Gaines that helped me through the week. So yeah, he's definitely got a knack for it, and he knows he knows what's going good, what's going bad, but.
Shay, it was, it was enjoyable, I don't know, a couple weeks ago hearing you talk about the start in Charlotte and you sort of just looking around the park for a little bit before right. being like, you know, this is pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, since you guys have gotten here, when you've been out there at the field, at the, have you looked around and sort of try to be like, man, you know, here we are, savor it type thing? Or is that something you've tried to avoid? Like, what have you gone about, like, the moment? I uh, know I, I embrace the moment 100%. I'll look around and take it all in. I think the biggest thing, like, handling a crowd is, like, realizing that it's there. I mean, the more you try and, like, block it, I don't know. I mean, once you're pitching to a guy and he's in the box, like, you don't even notice it at all. But, like, before the game and everything, I think you have to embrace it. And it can give you a different level of focus to tap into and definitely intent on the mound. So, Will there be fewer butterflies since you saw a game? You've been here for a while. Yeah, 100%. I think if I was in Jason's shoes, that I probably would have been racing a little bit more. <laughs> but now it's – I've been on the field. I've been acclimated. Like, I mean, Charlotte, LSU, and then last week against West Virginia, a bunch of people there. It gets to a point where it kind of all meshes into the one, I guess. But, no, tomorrow's going to be special, and I can't wait. Could be a big night at Brothers. Oh, yeah. It, it might be. There should be a good crowd up there watching tomorrow <laughs> night. You said that you guys watched Remember the Titans before the regional, mm -hmm. Lone Survivor before the Super. Did you have a pre Omaha movie? Oh, uh, no. Wait, we might have. Yeah, no, it was uh, 12 Strong. Me and Parks didn't go because we had a test, but all the guys watched 12 Strong over at uh, the football facility. Did you feel left out that you weren't included in that? Um, not really because I had seen it prior, but it was definitely, I know they had good reviews about it. Did you guys get to visit with Roy Williams at all? He was at the game yesterday. I know he texted Coach Forbes before the Super Regional. I think the Regional too, but we never met him. But I'm a big Roy Williams fan and Carolina Hoop, so it was pretty cool that he's there. You're fitting what right has in. The the last one. What has been the feeling for you, Shay, as you've watched this team? Sometimes you've been on the mound, sometimes you haven't. Right. Win these games in this dramatic fashion, you know, like, I mean, it's almost like, it seems like routine by now. Like, what is it like just watching – these things happen in the ninth inning and the tenth inning. Like, what's that like? Yeah, it's definitely a roller coaster of emotions, and you go up and down, but it's really fun to watch. And I'm just grateful to be a part of it, and grateful I chose Carolina last summer. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Shay. Thanks, Appreciate you, Shay. Thanks.